Hello, my name is Vitor Itur and I'm going to present the work Effect of Interface Viscosity on the Breakup of Liquid Sheets. This work was advised by Professor Márcio Carvalho and Dr. Sérgio Ribeiro during my master's degree at PUC Rio. Liquid sheets are broadly found in nature, such as the tear film that coats the human eye, and also in industrial applications like the curtain coating technique. They may present a slender aspect ratio and an interface that is free to deform. Fluctuations on the surface of the liquid sheet may affect the stability of the system, so the understanding of the stability of these systems is of fundamental importance in applications that present such a configuration. If the liquid sheet is sufficiently thin, the presence of long-range intermolecular attraction between the free surfaces of the film may influence the evolution of the perturbation. This surface perturbation may grow due to the action of van der Waals forces until the liquid sheet undergoes rupture or the growth of the perturbation may be damped by the capillary forces and extra interfaces for interface forces that opposes the van der Waals forces. So, in short, the rupture process occurs due to the drainage of liquid from the perturbed region, leading to the thinning of the film. And this drainage is characterized by an outward flow from the perturbed region. This thinning process increases the influence of the van der Waals forces on the rupture dynamics. However, the rupture may be desirable or not. The rupture of the surface film that coats the human eye may lead to undesirable clinical conditions such as the dry eye syndrome, which makes it undesirable. Uh, on the other hand, the rupture of a liquid curtain into small liquid droplets is desirable in industrial applications such as the atomization process as presented by the right figure. So, our objective in this work is to understand the influence of interfacial rheology on the rupture of stationary thin liquid sheets with, with free interfaces. And more specifically, we aim at numerically address the dynamics of thin liquid sheets with viscous interfaces. To do so, we simulate the rupture dynamics of liquid films with inviscid interfaces and with viscous interfaces, and then compare the results obtained in both cases. Our problem is defined as follows. We have a planar flow of a stationary free thin liquid sheet. The bulk of the sheet is an incompressible Newtonian fluid, and we impose a symmetric perturbation on the free surfaces and consider the effects of capillarity, interface viscosity, and intermolecular attraction between the free surfaces through the van der Waals forces. Uh, here we can see the, do this, the domain of our model. Uh, we use the symmetry plane marked by this bottom dashed line here to ease the computational cost and we also organize the workflow in two cases, namely an inviscid interface case and a viscous interface case. We represent the free surface to the sharp interface approach and use the finite element method to obtain approximate solutions for the velocity field and pressure fields in our domain. We update the position of the interface through the arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian method or the ALE method and the algorithms are implemented in Python through the Phoenix library. So the boundaries of our domain are marked according to this figure. Uh, the conservation of mass is imposed by the continuity equation and the conservation of linear momentum is imposed by the Navier-Stokes equations. The initial conditions for the velocity and pressure fields are null and the initial shape of the interface is given by H of X as presented here. And here, HC represents the undisturbed film thickness, epsilon is the perturbation amplitude, and LC is the perturbation wavelength. We have the following boundary conditions. For their interface, we have a kinematic boundary condition and the balance of stress along the interface. The interfacial tension is given by this constitutive equation shown here, and the interface viscosity is modeled by the Boussinesque scriven law. Left and right boundaries of, of the domain are artificial boundaries in which the flow is considered to be developed, and also the curvature of the interface in this region is minimal, resulting in the absence of pressure gradient on the y direction of left and right boundaries. The bottom boundary is a symmetry plane in which the shear stress and the flow across the boundary are null. And here we have the residual equation obtained by the weak formulation of our system of differential equations. We use the Galerkin method in our finite element formulation and triangular elements in our discretization. We use quadratic elements for the velocity and linear elements for the pressure. Uh, the motion of the interface will be updated by the Allen method and we implement the newton rapson method to solve the resulting system of nonlinear algebraic equations. We consider the linear stability criterion proposed by Ernest and Davis to analyze the results obtained from the inviscid interface case. The linear stability criterion considers the parameters S, which is the ratio between capillary forces and bulk viscous forces, and A, which is the ratio between van der Waals forces and bulk viscous forces. It states that under, under this geometric restriction, the liquid sheet is linearly stable if S over A is greater or equal to 2 over pi squared. 
We consider these expression here, expressions here for the characteristic scales of our problem and use the following dimensionless variables to present the results obtained, meaning that we will simulate our model in a dimensional form and we, we will present the results in a dimensionless form. We also consider the capillary number and the booziness number in the discussion of the results presented in this work. And so the setup of the problem is defined according to these parameters and conditions here. And so these are the results obtained for, for the inviscid interface case. Here we initialize our domain with a perturbation of amplitude equals to 2% of the undisturbed film thickness, HC, along with a capillary number of 2. We represent the perturbation evolution in terms of the initial perturbation amplitude by means of this parameter epsilon. Uh, in this chart here, we have the evolution of the perturbation epsilon in x equals 0 for various values of s over a. And here we can see that for small values of s over a, the perturbation grows monotonically. Intermediate values of s over a leads to the retraction of the perturbation until a certain time, and then the perturbation grows afterwards, displaying a non-monotonic behavior. For large values of s over a, the retraction of the perturbation occurs until the film recovers a homogeneous thickness. And here we keep s over a equals to 1 over pi squared, an initial perturbation of amplitude equals to 10% of hc, and a capillary number equals to 2. And we can see here the pressure field in three uh, different times. The pressure is maximum at the region of minimal thickness, which is located in x equals 0, and the pressure increases in x equals 0 until the film reaches the rupture, result resulting in an increase of the pressure gradient from x equals 0 towards the extremities. This increase of the pressure gradient influences the drainage of the liquid from the perturbed region. And we see here the x component of the velocity field on the left figure, which indicates the increase on the drainage velocity in time. The right figure shows the y component of the velocity field in which we can see that the minimum value occurs in x equals 0. And also the thickness of the film increases near x equals plus or minus 0 0.5, which is here, near here. And this behavior may be related to the occurrence of capillary ridges. Now we move to the results obtained for the viscous interface case. We keep the ratio s over a fixed in 1 over pi squared, the capillary number fixed at 2, and vary the Boussinesse number between 0 and 75. The inviscid interface is given by the, the Boussinesse number equals to 0. And the left chart presents the evolution of the perturbation epsilon in time. We see that as the Boussinesse number increases, the perturbation evolution becomes lower. And the right chart presents the, the rupture time as a function of the Boussinès number. We see that the effects of interface viscosity slows down the rupture process. And here we have the, the pressure fields for four values of the Boussinès number, and these results are evaluated at t equals 4.3, which is the rupture time of the inviscid interface case. And notice that the pressure distribution is similar in the cases with considerable interface viscosity. And here we see the x and y component of the velocity field at t equals 4.3 for four values of the Boussinès number, respectively, on the left and right. And we can notice on the left figure that the increase of interface viscosity leads to a reduction on the, dra on the drainage velocity. On the right figure, we see that the effects of interface viscosity reduces, reduce the velocity of attraction between the free surfaces, indicating that the interface, of interface viscosity opposes the effects of the van der Waals forces. Okay, so we can conclude a few points with these results. For the inviscid interface, we will mark that the linear stability criterion succeeds at predicting the early behavior of the system, but it fails at a given time. This is evident by the non-monotonic behavior observed in our results. This failure may be associated with the linear nature of the criterion in which nonlinear effects are not considered. From the viscous interface case, we can observe that the effects of interfacial rheology strongly opposes the action, oppose the action of long-range intermolecular attraction between the free surfaces. And at last, the effects of interface viscosity reduce, reduce the growth of the perturbation. And for future works, we will recommend the evaluation of the perturbation evolution in viscous interfaces for different values of S over A. And also, we, we recommend the evaluation of the rupture dynamics of liquid sheets under non-symmetrical uh, perturbation or asymmetric perturbations. And we also recommend the execution of experimental works regarding thin films with viscous interfaces as there are not so many works available in the literature. Thank you very much and I conclude here.